Sound Design. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at module four of Pro Audio Workshop Seeing Sound. So everyone wants to know how to EQ. This lesson is all about EQ and listening. So as we get into the first lesson of this module, the goal of sound system tuning, this is going to talk about the difference between tuning and toning, right? So kind of the science and the art. Um, you've got the mixing board over here where we're doing all the art, and then we've got the system processor over here and speaker position, aim, and system design over here. Um, and then I give you some examples of target curves. We talk about that. The second lesson in module four is about when to use EQ. So how do I know if the problem I'm experiencing can even be solved by EQ? So we talk about that here and just some general guidelines for what's actually possible with EQ. How to set EQ filters. Um, this is a surprisingly simple lesson and hopefully will be a breath of fresh air for people who are really worried about this. Um, I have a pretty simple process that I teach. All right, now we're gonna get into the EQ order of operations. This is where we start learning about combining speaker by speaker until we get an entire system. So we always start with single systems, add things to it, and then move a, kind of along the line of priority until we get the whole thing running together. So just to give you an example, let's say that you have uh, two mains and a front fill. So you're gonna start with one main, you're gonna listen to that, EQ that, then you're gonna turn the second one on and EQ those together, and then you're gonna turn the front fill on, EQ those together. So we have a whole, process here for deciding which speakers to EQ in what order. And this just talks about how to EQ that first single speaker and how to decide which one to start with. Next we move to speaker to speaker. So once we've EQ'd one speaker, now we're gonna turn on another one together. And even if we stand right in front of that speaker, that second speaker on with it is generally going to affect it somehow, right? Even if it's not pointed in the same direction. So we're gonna look at what um, measurement microphone positions do we need to use? And what is the order of operations here so that we can be efficient with our EQ, um, but also not create a monarchy. So one of the biggest problems with EQ is when people just put a microphone in front of house and say, okay, microphone on, entire system on, EQ filters, done when what we really need is generally a little bit more specific approach where the speaker here for this part of the audience is going to need a certain kind of EQ. And maybe this different speaker from a different manufacturer for a different part of the audience in a different part of the room is going to need a slightly different EQ. And then we're also gonna to need to look at those two responses together where they cross over the acoustic crossover point somewhere in the room. Once we've done a single speaker and then speaker to speaker, then we start to look at array to array and array to room. So you can see it just kind of gets bigger and bigger. And what I really like about this process is it helps us really reduce the amount of chaos we have to deal with, right? So now we have a system for looking at this stuff and we're not trying to observe and fix 20 million problems from 20 million sources all at once. No, we're looking at one source at a time, combining those, making those work, and moving on to larger subsystems. That's the end of module four. So we made it all the way through EQ and listening. And in the next video, I want to look at module five, which is crossover alignment. Sound design. Yeah.